Welcome everybody. By now you have a good understanding of the subsurface, the petroleum geology and the play-based exploration workflow. Assume you have been awarded the rights to explore in a large offshore area or in the desert of Oman. What kind of data do you need to assess its hydrocarbon potential below the surface? This chapter will cover some of the data explorers use to evaluate the subsurface. After this module, you will be able to spot hydrocarbons on this seismic line. You understand the significance of this picture or wire line logging and I will tell you how we get a piece of rock like this from 3000 meters depth to the surface. One of the most important sources of information of the underground is seismic data, which is extensively used by explorers. This picture shows the surface and the subsurface below. An energy source is placed and geophones are laid out. A geophone like this one that I have in my hand over here. It records movements at the surface. From the energy source Seismic waves spread out and bounce back to the surface and the reflected signals are recorded by the geophones. Afterwards, specialists with the help of powerful computers will create an image of the subsurface. We shoot seismic in many different environments. Here you see a seismic acquisition crew busy in Russia. These are vibrosizers trucks in the desert. A plate is lowered on the ground and the truck puts all its weight on the top of it and starts to shake, creating a signal in the underground. This technique is also very much used in populated areas such as the Netherlands. Seismic is also recorded at the sea. Here you see a boat towing air guns and behind 8 km length of hydrophones. Now, can we predict the presence of reservoir or seal from seismic? The answer is sometimes. The seismic line shows parallel near horizontal seismic reflectors indicated in yellow over here. The reflectors steepen their dips indicated in green. An experienced geologist will recognize this pattern as deltaic deposits and from that he predicts that there will be sands present in the parallel near horizontal seismic reflectors and shales in the steeper dips. Now, can we see hydrocarbons on seismic? The, uh, or the answer is yes, given the right circumstances. Assume you have a water-bearing sand layer, indicated here in yellow, enclosed in shale. The top of this structure is filled with hydrocarbons, oil, indicated in red over here. At the interface of water-bearing sand and shale, we get this seismic response. At the boundary between shale and the oil layer, the reflection will be stronger because the density difference between the shale and the oil-bearing rock is larger than at the boundary between shale and water-bearing reservoir. Oil is less dense than water. So, if you would go from water-bearing reservoir to oil-bearing reservoir, then we would see an increase of amplitude, as shown on this picture. So now we know the theory, let's practice. I want you to have a close look at this seismic line. Can you see indications of hydrocarbons on this seismic line? I'll give you some seconds. I'll give you a bit more information. There are two intervals. Let me give you the answer. There are, these are the two intervals that contain the hydrocarbons. The first interval and the second interval. Now let's follow this amplitude. It is weak over here. It's bright at the crest and it's weak again strong indications of hydrocarbons being present. The same is for this interval. 
you can practice your skills a bit more in an exercise. So how does the geologist find a structure that might contain hydrocarbons? Now, the geologist will start to measure the depth of this level on this seismic line and all the other seismic lines over the area. Then the computer will generate a depth map. In the next step, the geologist will indicate where hydrocarbons might be present. The size of the structure and interpretation where the hydrocarbons might be located will form the basis for a volumetric assessment of the opportunity. I would like to conclude this module to explain the difference between 2D, 3D and 4D seismic. You might wonder what this 2D image of a baby in the womb of a mother has to do with seismic. We could compare this with a seismic line, which is a 2D image of the subsurface. This picture shows a 3D image of the baby in the womb. We geologists have also 3D seismic. And this will give you a 3D image of the subsurface. It allows us to give a sharper image of the subsurface and target our exploration wells better. 4D seismic is simply shooting 3D seismic at different times during the development. This picture shows the reflection amplitudes at the top of the reservoir. Red colors re represent oil in the reservoir prior to field development. Since then, several 3D seismic servers have been shot over the field and the amplitudes at the top of the reservoir have been measured. The amplitude change uh, happens in time due to the hydrocarbons moving as a result of hydrocarbons production in the field. What you can also see is that there is an area where the hydrocarbons are not being drained. This is the area with bypassed oil. Oil that has not been produced by the current development wells. Hence, we need to put a well in this location to drain the remaining oil. Now, this concludes the submodule on seismic. Please have a look at your exercises.